Uh, tonight we'll be talking about mesh, um, and I think kind of looking at like the history of mesh and being like a football, a football nerd to a certain extent. I think my mindset and how I've kind of viewed mesh and shaped uh, the way that I've kind of just even looked at it as a football philosophy perspective is going away from just having one singular mesh concept within your offensive system. So if you really uh, want to keep things simple, el eliminate teaching whole separate concepts for uh, for the mesh deal is having it being that underlying concept within the bigger picture. And what I mean, what I mean by that, I'll kind of get into it uh, in more detail, but having your base concept over the top, whether it be a post wheel, whether it be a drive concept, whether it be uh, a crossing concept from uh, like the air raid type deal, anything like that. And I'll get in, in, into some more examples kind of as we go through the presentation. Uh, but the mesh is going to be the underneath man beater within the concept. Uh, and now you can still run and have the initial read as like your zone answer and things like that uh, be kind of that added overall ideology that you're operating uh, within. So now kind of getting away from that mesh as its own singular play, using it as that layer or an adjustment to routes within your passing game, I think is kind of uh, the wave that a lot of people are going towards. And I think you'll continue to see that uh, as we kind of move forward over the next couple of years here within the game of football itself. So we're still keeping the initial concept as it would in your base, whether you're running that post wheel, uh, cross, a shallow concept, a flood concept, whatever the case may be, a smash concept, um, you're still going to have that route combination within the concept. Uh, and your quarterback will primarily be looking to ID zone versus man. ID zone, he's going to go through his progression uh, for the zone answer. Now, if he ID's man coverage. Now we can get down and work back down to that mesh concept underneath as the man beater. Uh, and then as we kind of work through the zone concept uh, side of it, uh, that underneath crossing route, crossing into the flat will be the stressor within some three level stuff that we'll see uh, within the concept as well. So there's multiple layers, uh, but really kind of the big takeaway that I want people to take away from this evening is having that concept be the overlying concept and then uh, mesh being kind of that added layer um, as an underneath man beating type deal within the concept itself. Um, so the first one that I think you see popularized uh, by a lot of people, and I kind of want to look at it from this perspective of uh, what is the actual concept itself and then how can we add the mesh tag? Uh, so first, before we get into the concept, I kind of want to talk about some of like the key coaching points for mesh. Um, for the mesh, uh, the guy or the receiver to the passing strength, so whichever side uh, the quarterback is going to look to in his read first. So in this case, uh, for this concept over here to the left, uh, we're teaching the quarterback to go to the right as the passing strength. Uh, so looking to this right side, check into the wheel uh, down to the underneath crosser, but that crosser to the passing strength. So this one here, uh, he'd be the uh, play side number two. Um, he is going to be the point man, as we call it. So he is setting the mesh at five yards. Uh, he is going to be the guy that is not going to be getting the ball 95% uh, of the time within the mesh concept, in my opinion. Uh, so he's kind of that guy where you just got to teach him, hey, man, when you're to the passing strength side, you're basically the pick man. You got to be a selfless football player within the man answer um, and really set the point, do a good job of setting that point, um, and then setting a pick in essence uh, versus man coverage. So he's really looking. Uh, you can do some different stuff to motion guys across, motion backs out of the backfield to ID man versus zone. I think if you can uh, either motion that back out of the backfield or motion the underneath mesh player uh, to kind of see who exactly that man to man coverage. Uh, matchup is it gives uh, the point setter as I like to call him a better idea of who he's kind of picking for and who he's trying to create a nice rub action with for the underneath uh, mesh player so now the backside number two so I always like to keep it simple to where the two inside most receivers are always running the mesh course uh, so the backside number two in this two by two formation he is going to be uh, the guy who we're looking to get the football within this concept uh, so he will be going underneath of that five yard landmark and they're going to try to high five at the mesh point. I've heard multiple people have different opinions about the validity of that. But I think if you can create 
uh, as little of a window of space as possible for that uh, overhang linebacker or a safety playing man coverage to get through and force him to either declare over the top or work underneath and really chase him from behind, I think the better. So I think that high five point isn't really slowing anyone down uh, and adds uh, a good visual cue as well as a physical cue uh, to make sure that we're not uh, widening the separation between the two meshers. Um, so those are my big coaching points. You're, you're trying to work to five yards by the time you get to the opposite hash if you're the underneath player, uh, really trying to stress the flat once we get into the actual concept itself, uh, once we start to ID zone coverage. Yeah, Coach, um, we, we had a question come through about, uh, you know, what about mesh out of empty and three by one? Would you just essentially take that back out of the backfield for an empty situation and wheel him out? Uh, how would you play that? Yeah, so I think I kind of alluded to it. Uh, briefly, having the two inside guys be the meshers, uh, obviously, I think you can do some different tags to where you might tag it switch to where now uh, the outside receiver is running the mesh as opposed to the inside guy. But the base rules to keep it simple, uh, when you add this mesh tag to any concept, um, it's the two inside guys. So now if we didn't want to get to empty and motion that back uh, out wide, so as opposed to having him run the wheel um, primarily into the boundary. We can just motion him out of there. Once again, a good ID indicator for zone versus man coverage. So if we motion him out here, go into an empty set, and this linebacker wants to walk all the way out and cover number one, uh, good I, good indicator and good ID that they're going to be in man coverage. Now the quarterback can look to read through the mesh uh, and find the winner through that rub route. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. But yeah. essentially, yeah, trying to teach it uh, within that passing strength concept style to where – any receiver can essentially run any route um, from any alignments. They're learning the whole concept as opposed to saying, uh, oh, I'm always the X or the Y or the Z. So the, the Z always runs this. Uh, we're talking about passing strength and trying to structure it so we can get guys uh, running routes from multiple positions, not so much uh, just their physical uh, labeled position, whether it be that X, Y, Z, H, whatever the case may be. Uh, so kind of looking at how we can translate from this scat or a high low concept to the mesh. So looking over here on the right side, this is a concept uh, that I've seen run personally run in the past um, where it's just a simple, you're getting the high low. And then if you want to uh, go to a three by one set, this guy's just working into the flat. Uh, that's the scat part of it. And the high low is obviously working um, to the uh, dig with the spot route over the center at seven yards. So it's the same concept. Uh, now we're just adding this mesh tag. So now instead, uh, the two inside guys, once again, are going to be running the mesh routes. Uh, number one will now have that sit route of the spot route. And now the back out of the backfield, or if we were to go empty, the first receiver to the trip side would be running either the wheel or a takeoff route like this uh, versus that empty set. So I think uh, kind of seeing how that's like the base of what. I'm a big fan of doing mesh wise. That was the mesh staple that I kind of learned um, in college and now kind of adapting it and taking that to any concept. So the big one that I've seen a lot of success with uh, and one that we do run at Oberlin College a lot is this post wheel action with the mesh. So the initial concept, the original concept, uh, I'm a big fan of doing the split field reads for the quarterback. So having a two high beater on one side and having a one high beater on the other side, this is a concept that uh, we'll use um, trying to get to the one high side over here and the two high side for a quarters beater on the post wheel to the opposite side. Now we just tag it mesh. Um, and now that works out of a three by one set. In this case, um, you got the two underneath crossers being the most inside receivers still got the post wheel action. So if the quarterback IDs man coverage, obviously trying to get down um, to the mesh deal, but also at the same time, if he were to ID quarters coverage, uh, he can work to that post wheel action. And now if this flat defender who would be obviously bumped out uh, in a true alignment, if that flat defender wants to carry with the wheel versus zone coverage, you should have the underneath crossing route uh, coming back from the backside, going to the passing strength. So the quarterback initially going to look for the post wheel versus zone, working back down uh, to the underneath crossing route if that flat defender wants to vacate. So I think it's a really simple read. Uh, I think it's an easy read to teach the quarterback. And now if we didn't want to go to like a two-by-two two set here where we were to motion the uh, this A position here across to be the number one receiver, you can still run him on some sort of a vertical or a comeback read. And now you put the back out of the backfield around the wheel route. So there's 
a multitude of different things you can do. You can do it on multiple formations using multiple uh, position players to run each route within the concept. Uh, so I think this one's been successful. Yeah, uh, and Coach, the- before you get to the next one, uh, we had a question come through. Have you ever used the back as the underneath route and the backside one setting the pick? So similar, you were just talking about the running back. Yeah, so I I have seen that as well. Um, and I do think there is a couple uh, in the film cutups, not necessarily personally doing it because we – uh, just like the way that we structure at Oberlin, uh, the back routes, like we don't really have him uh, checking into that so much where he's primarily going to be that wheel player trying to work into the flat uh, for where we're at right now offensively. Uh, but I have seen some stuff like I got some cut ups of this past season with the Packers uh, where like Matt LaFleur uh, will do some stuff where he'll have that back be the underneath uh, pick player on like yeah. the drive route. So like doing some stuff like that, I think is definitely a viable option. Uh, not necessarily something that I do personally, but I do see the value in it as well. Uh, so looking at this next one, uh, everyone in America, I think, runs some sort of a flood concept where you're trying to flood the three zones uh, the, or stretch the three field zones uh, vertically within the defense. Uh, so just a traditional flood deal where you're, we run it where you run a uh, skinny post from the number one receiver and run more of that corner. So kind of that sale concept that a lot of people run. That's just our flood deal. <clears throat> um, backside, we got the dig for our normal concept. Now just go over, over to the mesh side. You got uh, tagging it mesh, just as simple as that. Now the two inside guys are on the mesh route. You still get the same action to the flood side. So if you get a cover three, look, boom, uh, let's go flood mesh. Uh, so now if they do want to rotate to a cover three, uh, you're putting stress on this flat defender if they were to rotate weak. Uh, if they want to go into that cover three look, uh, you got answers for that. Now, if you can ID uh, man coverage, there's answers for that within the mesh concept as well. Uh, finally, this has been one that I've really liked a lot has been this uh, the cross mesh. So having a crossing route, we run the cross uh, within our offense of trying to basically get underneath the first inside of you and then climb over top of number two. And with that, I think seeing a lot of uh, how teams play, um, some of their like match deal where if that guy's inside releasing underneath of you, uh, you can pass him along where if you were to uh, release over the top of this hook player in this single high structure, uh, he's going to be matching you coming across. So I think having an underneath release of that initial player, uh, whatever the concept or whatever the coverage might be, you're trying to inside release, uh, get underneath number one and then climb over the top of number two, trying to get to about 12 yards on the opposite hash. That's our normal cross concept. Now out of mesh, I know I kind of got a little bit different here. We can do it either way, but uh, with this tag, um, having the inside guy just for timing purposes run this crossing route. So he's going to run it the same as. You don't have to teach a whole other concept. Uh, he's, he's running it the same as he would in our cross concept. Now we got the two, uh, the inside guy to the passing strength and the outside guy in this case with the tag adjustment uh, running the mesh concept. So uh, a good deal off of play action here, getting some guys sucked down. Um, and then also, once again, having that three level type deal to attack zone coverage and then having that man answer, uh, forcing some guys to cover uh, the entire width of the field as well as stretching them vertically within that passing concept, I think is one that uh, a lot of teams are starting to run now and one that's really taken a lot of popularity across football. So that was all I had presentation wise. Um, I'll get into some of the film cut ups. Um, and obviously, if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to hop in. So looking at this first one, uh, this is the post wheel action. So we uh, using that across motion from our T here, uh, a good indicator of zone versus man getting what looks to be a quarters coverage look uh, initially uh, pre-snap. So whoever that motion man is within our offense is going to be the one running the wheel route. So now in this case, we'll get the underneath crosser, uh, the post from number one, and then the wheel from the motion man. So we still get that post wheel action. We can look to uh, read this quarter safety first. If he wants to really fly out with the wheel uh, or play underneath and not get over top of the post, we can look to hit that right away. Uh, if not, then I can work to this fl- uh, the flat player. If he wants to cover the wheel, uh, then that should leave this underneath crossing route uh, open in the flat on the other side. So looking at this, that safety, you can see he kind of plays, uh, trying to play more to take away that jet action. He gets caught peeking. We still hang that other safety on the opposite hash. 
great look for the post. And we're really teaching our guys to not cross over that hash. So we're trying to keep this outside post skinny. Um, so if we're maybe doing it from a different alignment, he might start out a little bit wider, but just trying to get to our landmarks and where we're at ability split wise. Um, he's going to keep that skinny up the hash, not trying to allow uh, for that to get off his landmark to where that opposite hash safety or a possible middle of the field post safety uh, could make a play on the ball. And obviously with uh, this flat player carrying with the wheel, if that safety was the play over the top now, you got all this green grass uh, for the underneath crossing round. I think that seeing how many teams are kind of going to that quarters look nowadays, I think this is one that has really taken, like if, if, I, if I could pick any two mesh concepts, it would be that first one, kind of that Chip Kelly deal where you're doing the over the ball route with the high low action and this. I think this if you're looking to have two variations of mesh and you want to keep it as simple as that, I think these are the two to go. Middle of the field open or middle of the field close coverage. Now, Coach, do you mind just breaking down a little bit uh, the reads and what the quarterback's looking for? I know we talked about man and zone coverage, but on a play particularly like this, if he identifies zone coverage, you want him reading high, low. Like, What's the progression for the quarterback here? Yeah, so for this, with the post-wheel deal, I uh, kind of touched on it before, but um, and initially, if he IDs this quarter's coverage, he's looking to read this safety. So in this case, the safety plays down, uh, or if he were to really fly out with the wheel, if he was like really looking to take away number two in that defensive scheme. So if he's either playing up and we can get this post ball over his head, uh, we're looking to manipulate this safety first. Second, reading the flat defender. So for the wheel route, um, if this safety does want to hang hard and play over the top uh, on this post deal, uh, he should be one on one with the flat defender. So if he plays a little bit flat footed, uh, doesn't really honor the wheel right away and we can beat him on the wheel. The quarterback is looking to check to the wheel second. And now, uh, as you kind of see on this play, if this guy clears out, the safety plays over the top. Uh, now this underneath crossing route should be able to uh, clear out and take advantage of the green grass Perfect. that's there. Perfect. Awesome. So like I said, that safety plays down. We'll take the post. Next, kind of looking for that flat defender. He's carrying with the wheel. Uh, maybe not the best carry to where if this corner was really playing hard off of him and the quarterback hit his hitch step and now uh, kind of worked up into the pocket off of the second read to go to the wheel, that might be an option. Uh, and then finally, with this flat player carrying out, we got all this green grass for the underneath. That'd be the third progression in the read. And then at that point, uh, you could work to this backside crossing route, but the way it works out with timing wise and keeping protection, there's usually not enough time to do uh, to get to that fourth read, honestly. So once again, this is the post wheel deal. Uh, once again, out of that motion, so the motion man will be the post player. So in this case, probably not looking to the post just because the middle of the field is closed. So if we were to run this post, a good chance that, that this safety might make the play. But, but with him hanging all the way over onto this hash, uh, it's a potential option, but not my first thought if I'm coaching the quarterbacks here. Second is stressing this flat player. So this guy is peeking into the backfield, potentially trying to funnel uh, the, the initial number two receiver up to this post safety. Uh, but with that, he loses sight of the wheel route. And that slight hesitation allows the quarterback to drop in a back shoulder throw, uh, lets the receiver kind of bog down on, underneath the coverage, um, throws a really nice ball there. So that's kind of the cover three type of adjustment. Uh, obviously understanding as well, though, here with this safety playing all the way on the opposite hash pre-snap, uh, there's a possible option of taking that post route over the top uh, if it was available. So you can see this late, obviously, uh, with that guy kind of he being hesitant, hanging on this hash, he is able to go over the top. Uh, so the post in this situation might not be a bad idea either. And obviously, once again, if we do were to get man here, uh, he's looking to set the pick on this corner playing uh, Meg coverage. So we have that as well. So 
So here's more of like a smash concept type deal. So we'll run like a corner read and then run a, a corner out over here. So this is more of a looking at it from like a smash perspective. So but here, obviously, get that good crossing route, get the good collision. Middle of the field open coverage. This flat defender kind of vacates. Now this is the flat defender. If we can get that pick on him, this underneath should be pretty wide open. So that flat defender chases in a little bit, gets too overcommitted to the underneath route. Allows for a pretty nice gain. Once again, here's that post wheel action. So kind of seeing teams are quarters teams. This is primarily when you want to run this. It's kind of one of those where the flat defender carries with the wheel. That safety kind of hangs on the post. So we got all this green grass into the flat to the other side. Not the obviously a completion and would have wanted to get the ball out a little bit quicker. But here you got that guy chasing, forcing the corner to run all the way across the field. Gets a nice little pick there, forcing to go over the top. We should make that throw a little bit sooner. So now here's some of the like kind of where we got this from and just looking at some of the stuff that these NFL teams are doing. Uh, obviously a little bit different level. So here was the idea that I talked about where uh, you can run these two underneath guys on the mesh, and now you still get the post and you still get the wheel from the back out of the backfield. So there's different combinations you can do within it. Uh, getting some orbit motion here from the Packers, kind of drawing some eye candy away, and that clears out the flat. This is kind of that man, uh, looking at some man coverage stuff. If this nickel player is running all the way across the field with this receiver off this motion, good indicator for the quarterback to look for his man answer. This is the front side of his read here. Uh, so he's looking to try to hit Adams underneath on the crossing route. Hopefully uh, this receiver over here knows that his job is primarily to be that pick player. So he should be looking to get a good rub. Doesn't do the best job there, kind of fades away from it. Uh, sometimes you get called for it, sometimes you don't. It's kind of that world that you live in. Uh, just trying to run through him, don't necessarily set a pick to the point where uh, he's flopping and all that kind of stuff to where it's evident that it's an OPI. But so here's that empty set that uh, someone was asking about. So here it's the same deal. The two inside guys uh, going to end up being the crossing route. <clears throat> it doesn't end up making the grab here, but I think this is uh, just a good way to kind of add a double move within that. You can add different tags to it, do some different stuff out of empty. This is essentially kind of uh, like the cross concept that we were talking about. So you get the underneath crosser here, you get the intermediate here, and then uh, the way they did it with the Packers is they ran this guy on a corner route, but he's still taking that deep level of the levels concept. And, I've been, obviously, I think – Anyone that's watched the Ohio State-Michigan rivalry over the past few years has seen Ohio State shred some of the uh, cover one done over the past couple of years. And a big reason for that was their mesh concept that they used. Uh, so here, once again, if we can find a way to ID man versus zone, they don't do it with motion here. Uh, but they did a lot of motion that back out of the backfield to ID man. Uh, but in this case, sort of that spot concept to where – uh, the quarterback is looking this side first. Um, but And then with this, too, if you do get that over-the-ball route from an outside receiver, I think that adds almost a second pick uh, to where you're really forcing that guy to bail hard underneath or go all the way over the top and run the hump and try to collect him on the other side, which is pretty hard to do. Uh, so with here we get the double pick. He comes back to the backside one, just kind of seeing that ID being man versus zone. Uh, if you can ID man, that's the only time that you really – want to be looking to that backside crossing route. And that's just kind of seeing where the matchup is at uh, and seeing um, who's winning through that mesh. So he's keeping his eyes down the middle of the field, 
seeing where the separation is between these two guys. He likes his matchup with the underneath crosser coming back across. Uh, obviously clearing out the whole other side results in a touchdown. Some more Ohio State stuff here. They do the whole post wheel action as well. This is one where they just have the spot route being the pick player. Uh, so another variation that they run out of mesh, I know. Uh, they'll just have him sit over the ball, uh, but still trying to get that pick or that rub action versus man here versus zone. Kind of do some things differently. Once again, the zone read here. Looking to eye up the safety. Uh, second, looking to carry the flat defender if both those guys want to carry. I think in this case, you got the post wide open as well. Uh but still potentially getting down to that as a secondary option. And here's that good zone versus man indicator again, getting that motion across. If same guy's following you all the way across the formation, a good man indicator. And we can still hit that back wheel out of the backfield. So quarterback looking to check there first, if they don't want to honor it, get a good little rub on him as well. Uh, force a linebacker to carry uh, to carry and cover the back out of the backfield is always a good option matchup wise for the offense. And that is all I have for this evening. That's awesome. All right, what we're going to do? We're going to leave the chat open if there is any other questions, um, Coach. I, I love this because I think it's so simple to take a simple concept like mesh and then you can just tag it right so if you have an offense where you're maybe you're calling mesh just straight up mesh you can add mesh swing you can add mesh spot you can do whatever you want with the running back and put it different formations but to your point right mesh is mesh it, it's just what you do off of it and how you add that running back or that third person to the mix yeah i think it's big to just kind of look at like what do you do offensively i think this is kind of like going beyond just like the clinic talk of like finding something cool and like, oh, I'm ever really going to use this. I think each coach has to kind of look at it and say, what do we do offensively? Uh, and then you can kind of tailor it to where, okay, if I don't run this post wheel concept and I'm not going to put it in with my mesh series, but maybe I have the smash route that we really run a lot of, uh, but we've been having a hard time beating man coverage with it. Well, now here's a man answer that you can kind of attach and tag and it's still the same smash concept, still the same read for the quarterback. He just has that extra layer added to it to where he has that man answer. And then also for the receivers, they have the simple rule of, okay, we're the two inside guys. We're running the mesh as our base rule. And so you add some other sort of tag to it. Uh, so they don't have to learn anything else. You, could, you don't have to spend a whole lot of equity um, of teaching it, spending time during practice teaching it. So I think, I think having it be that more simplified version, obviously everyone knows what mesh is, but having a way that you can – efficiently tag it, install it, and keep as much of it same as has been uh, something that I've really looked to the past couple of years. Yeah, I love the simplicity of it too, for the quarterback at least, right? Because if you know man, you go in the mesh zone, you got to, you know, you can read high to low with it too. So uh, I love the simplicity of it. Uh, I'm looking at the chat now and I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, if anyone does have any questions for Coach Wingle, the DMs are wide open. I know he's been doing a lot of recruiting in the off season. So uh, for right now, Coach, you got any last words before we sign off? No, I appreciate everyone turning in, um, tuning in. Um, like I said, obviously, if you have any other questions, have any kids you want to shoot my way for recruiting-wise, uh, feel free to reach out to me at Coach underscore Swingle. Yeah. Awesome. Well, signing off, I'm Coach Chris Haddad, Coach Ryan Swingle. We'll be back next week, Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, for another live clinic.